The Mustang Mach 1 returns after a 17-year hiatus. I got some Bronco news, some spy photos, and of course it debuts on July the 9th. And the Lexus IS returns as well. It's a big news day. There's a lot to cover. Let's get into it. I got some good news and some not so good news about the Lexus IS. Let's just start out with the, the not so good news. I'm not gonna call it the bad news, but it is based on the current N platform. This is not a chassis update. This is not like a major, it's just a refresh is what I'm saying. It's just a refresh. It's still based on the N platform like I was saying. 2013 was the last time we saw an update to this, so it's kind of it's kind of due right now. Now the engine choices, they're they're also the same as, as we get now. There's two versions of this coming out. There is the IS300 and the IS350. So if you get the IS300 and you get the all-wheel drive version, it comes with a three and a half liter V6. It makes 260 horsepower. But if you want to upgrade and get the big daddy, the 350, it's got the same three and a half liter, but it makes 311 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. So that's, that's definitely more. Now, here's the thing. Could there be a future IS500? Hmm, there's a, there's a couple rumors floating around about a five liter naturally aspirated engine making about 470 horsepower. It's currently in the Lexus line. I'll let you figure out where that is. Or maybe the twin turbo V6 from the LS500. So let's, let's cross our fingers for that. There's, it's a rumor. It's not exactly confirmed right now. Uh, it's going to come in uh, rear-wheel drive which is an eight, with an 8-speed automatic, and in the all-wheel drive it's going to have a 6-speed auto. Now, the good news. There is some good news here. This looks, they've done, they've redone the exterior and the interior, so it's got a new body on the outside, and I think it looks, I think it looks pretty sharp, actually. It's sort of the same formula that they've got going right now. Now, the grill is bigger because... Apparently bigger is better in automotive grills right now. That is the trend. I'm sure you've seen all the amazing BMW memes on the internet. Well, I think Lexus does it better. I think Audi does it best, but the grill is indeed bigger. And the headlights, now the headlights are definitely updated from the current one. They're more Supra looking to me. The daytime running light, this little sort of L thing, that is now up inside the headlight. And I think this looks pretty sharp. The rear has this sort of L-shaped light bar. It goes across the entire width of the vehicle. Hello, BMW 4 Series. I, I thought BMW used to be leading. Now they seem to be copying with the styling thing. Anyway, overall, it's about one inch longer. It's about one inch wider, but the wheelbase is exactly the same. Now, Lexus says that it is the structure is more rigid. They have improved the steering response in it. It has a better ride quality, better handling, and Toyota has really, really done an excellent job with mastering ride quality, in my opinion. I've driven a lot of their products, and it's all, like, it's really top-notch. They're really at their game right now, so I'm sure there's going to be an improvement there. So it looks pretty good. Now let's go to the cabin. We have this amazing red leather treatment. I think it looks hot, but it also looks kind of the same as the last generation. Uh, so they've changed the vents on the on the driver and the passenger side to round from from horizontal. So the center console has been redone and finally, finally, thank you, they have updated the infotainment system which used to be, in my opinion, terrible. So that's all updated right now and of course it comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is super cool. I'm glad that this is finally getting rolled out across the Toyota lineup. And what's also really nice is something called the Lexus Safety System. This is essentially the same as the Toyota Safety Sense system and that is standard in all uh, Toyota's right now and so this is coming over to Lexus and it includes things like uh, pre-collision, automatic braking, radar cruise control with pedestrian detection, lane departure. In fact I did a whole video on this on the uh, Corolla hatch. It's up here. So I mean overall my take on it is the cabin kind of kind of the same kind of underwhelming. The exterior, I really do like the exterior treatment. I think it's gonna get some nice suspension revisions and I mean that's that's sort of what it is right now so let me know if this is something you'd be interested in I certainly do like Lexus products oh no word on the pricing but expect it to be pretty similar to what it is right now with perhaps a little bit of a bump up I expect to see this in the late fall the Mustang Mach 1 has returned after a 17 year hiatus 
So let's do some good news and some not so good news. I'm not going to say there's any bad news here at all because it's, it's pretty much all good. So let's start with the good. So they are sticking with a formula that works really well. This is going to be the most track focused coyote based Mustang that you can get. Now I'm, that's, that's my thing. I'm all about going to the track. I really dig that. So that, that speaks to me. It's got parts from the GT350, which has been discontinued, even though Ford won't verify that or say that it's, it's definitely been discontinued. 350R also, bye bye So parts from both of those, the transmission is right out of the GT350. It has the Tremec 3160. It's a six-speed manual transmission. This can handle more torque and more power than the six-speed manual that has been in the regular GT. So this is great that they're putting in the GT350 trans in this. It ships better and, I mean, it's a pretty good transmission. Now, they're also adding something new to this transmission, which is rev matching. They're not saying specifically upshifting, I'm assuming definitely for downshifting, possibly for upshifting, but definitely for downshifting. If you're not that experienced driving a manual transmission, this is probably a good thing. It's pretty helpful. I hope there is the option to turn it off. I definitely like rev matching. That's what my channel is. I love to do this manually. I would definitely go for the manual transmission in this vehicle, but they are making the 10 speed automatic available in the Mach 1. So you are getting the twin disc clutch from the GT with a short throw shifter and it's going to get a transmission oil cooler. So that is important for track duty, I think. It also comes with the 10 speed automatic transmission for the first time. It's a pretty great transmission. Not my personal choice, but it does shift very quickly. It's going to have some new programming and what's important is they're going to add an oil cooler and a transmission oil cooler for this transmission and it's going to increase cooling capacity by 75%. Okay, so now into the not, not so exciting news. It's got the Coyote engine. It makes 480 horsepower, 420 pounds-feet of torque. That's exactly the same as the outgoing Bullet. Again, they're not confirming that the Bullet is going away, but believe me, it's going away right now. So that's, that's not super exciting, but there are some changes to it, which leads me to think Perhaps there is some possibility for a little bit of additional power out of it. It has got a modified GT350 intake manifold, so it should be better for a little bit more airflow. Now it does have an oil filter adapter on there too, and it also has increased oil capacity, which they say is going to cool it by 50% more. That's very significant actually. And it's also got a rear axle uh, cooler too. So lots of cooling on this car and that is so important for track duty. I think these are really, really good upgrades to have. In terms of handling, it has the MagnaRide, the adaptive dampers. They're really good. It has stiffer sway bars and, and a stiffer front spring setup and revised steering. It also has 19.9.5 wheels on the front and 19 by 10 in the rear. These are a version of the classic Magnum 500 wheels. They're bringing them back and the color that they're gonna have it available with is called Tarnished Dark. It's also got a lot of aerodynamic upgrades too. So it has this large, they're calling it an underwing and it's basically this part that goes under the belly pan. It goes back uh, significantly farther than in the current GT and it has airfoils in it. So it's designed to actually improve brake cooling which they're saying is a first for the Mustang and it makes significantly more downforce, the whole car does, than the Performance Pack 1 because there's also something called the Handling Package which is exclusively available with the six-speed transmission. Save the manuals. I like it when companies do that where they make the good stuff available only in the manual. I'm down with that. So this includes a larger, higher force, downforce front splitter, uh, new front wheel lip moldings, and a high gloss magnetic swing spoiler with a gurney flap and the rear spats from the GT350. According to Car and Driver, the last bullet they tested, which has the same power, did zero to 60 in the low four second range, did the quarter mile in about 12.7 at 115 miles an hour. So pricing, let's talk about pricing even though it hasn't been announced yet. Uh, the base GT starts at about $40,000. The GT350, the outgoing one, starts at about $60,000. I'm thinking this is going to split the difference and probably come in at about 50. The GT350 has the very bespoke flat plane crank engine, which is really a super cool engine. I did a video on that. And 
that's going away. Now that makes 526 horsepower, and this is making 480, so I think it's gonna come in somewhere in between. Hopefully you can get it without dealer markup because, well, in this economy, who knows? But that's, that's what I would hope for. So there's a bit of a gap in the lineup right now. So we've got the GT, and then we've got the, the Mach 1, and then we have the GT500. So the GT500 starts at about $73,000. And if you add the track pack, you're easily at 100 k And for my money, that is a lot of money for a Mustang. I, I don't know how well it's going to keep its value. It probably will, but that is a lot of money for a Mustang. Let's just get real for a second. It's expensive for, for what it is. It is very sad to see the GT350 depart, though, and the 350R probably my favorite current Mustangs. Let me know down below if this Mach 1 is something that you would consider. Availability should be in the spring in the US and Canada, spring 2021. And the Bronco. I've been reporting on the Bronco for a long time and finally we have a reveal date. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you know what it is. It is OJ Simpson's birthday. It is July the 9th. I don't know if this is like an intentional thing. It's sort of a troll. I, I don't really know, but you know, I'm thinking of getting a Bronco on a white, maybe. What do you think? My guess, it's kind of a bit of an inside joke, so my guess is this is intentional. I don't think anyone would have really missed that at Ford. So there's so much testing going on with the Bronco right now in public that people on Facebook are even seeing the Bronco out in public. So thank you, Chad Hartzell and Heather Monday from the Facebook group for these. Now, what is really interesting that the roof on the Bronco has always had like really, really heavy camouflage. So that tells us, and the fact that there's all this testing going on right now, tells us that there's gonna be something special going on with the top that I think maybe we don't exactly know the whole picture yet. On the Jeep, you've got this soft top, you've got a hard top, and then you got the one touch sky top that goes all the way back. It's actually pretty cool. I just did a review on it, but I'm still editing that. Ford wants in on all this soft top, hard top, convertible top action. They want in on the Wrangler sales because the Wrangler sells really big. So what I reported before, and I think other places have reported too, what we're gonna probably get is a two-piece front uh, top where the driver side and the passenger side are independently removable, kind of like the 1970s Trans Am. Hopefully with a little bit less body flex and probably with a little bit less Burt Reynolds this time too. Expect the rear is gonna be probably one panel, but we're not quite sure. And there may be some onboard storage for the roof panels. Again, it's not entirely clear what we're gonna get, but I'm pretty sure Ford is gonna deliver a couple different options and they're gonna make it kind of special and kind of different from the Jeep because there's just so much stuff going on with the top and they're keeping it so under wraps. So from previous testing, it looks like the Bronco is gonna get tires that might be as big as 34 inches available from the factory. That's pretty big. That would beat the Jeep Wrangler, the Rubicon, which comes with 33s. If you wanna do 35s on that, you need to do some kind of lift kit. So I think they're gonna to try to just one up Jeep on the tire side. Now we talked about Wrangler being the target and clearly that is. But if you want a vehicle that is the closest suspension wise, I think we're looking at the Toyota 4Runner, which is also body on frame, but it has independent front suspension like the Bronco. I had one out, in fact, I just posted a video on it. It's very, very good off-road and it'll go 85%, 80% of the places that a, a Jeep will go. So the big question remains to be seen when Ford comes out with the Bronco, how capable is it gonna be compared to the Wrangler off-road? For the most serious rock crawling, you're just not gonna get that same level of articulation, obviously, but will it do better than the Toyota 4Runner in kind of extreme conditions? I think Ford wants in on part of the 4Runner market and definitely some of the Wrangler market, so they're coming in pretty hot and heavy. They're hoping to get 200,000 sales of the Bronco in 2021. We know it's gonna have a seven speed manual transmission. That's, I would say, as good as confirmed right now. We're highly expecting a 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine and a 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine. For all the people that keep asking about a V8 and they say, gonna go elsewhere if we don't get a V8. Well, I've got some bad news for you. There isn't gonna be a V8 because it doesn't fit. And there probably isn't gonna be a 3.5 liter either because it doesn't fit. I reported that exclusively a couple videos ago. And so far I don't have a, a reveal invite. I wonder if that could be why. So let me know down below where else you're going to go for that V8 
kind of experience that you're looking for in a new car, just, just let me know down below. I'd like to see that comment. There are going to be a lot of parts available at dealers. I'm going to call them aftermarket parts, even though they're available from Ford at launch. So there's going to be things like roof rack, all kinds of accessories, winches and tow stuff and whatnot. So Ford is going to make sure that all that stuff is kind of in place for the launch. That's going to be really important as part of their product strategy. So expect that and expect the aftermarket to jump in really quickly too with a lot of parts. That's going to be, I think, also a big part of the entire Bronco strategy, which there's a lot of talk about it becoming a sub-brand at Ford, along with the Mustang becoming a sub-brand as well. It does look like there's going to be a hybrid coming. I probably wouldn't expect to see that at launch, but hey, you never know. The launch is going to be, of course, on July the 9th. And from what I'm hearing from dealers is that it's going to be available at dealers probably in the fall of this year, maybe November, because everything has been pushed back a couple of months, maybe like Thanksgiving kind of time frame for the people that have already had a deposit in or have a good existing relationship with their dealer. I think most everybody else is going to have to wait probably till 2021 for theirs. And by the way, all this stuff I've been talking about, the Bronco, I've been just specifically talking about the Bronco body and frame one. The Ford F-150 reveal is just nine days away. It's going to be on June 25th. My name is Eric. If you like these videos, please subscribe. There's another one up on screen. Click on it if you want more news and info. See you soon.